Page 101, Land of the Silver Birch. At the top of the page, they talk about common time. I'm a little confused because I know you've had cut time. And normally a method book will present common time before they present cut time. Have you not had common time? I can't remember. I don't even remember who you are. I just... Common time is simply 4-4 four, four time. A long time ago, rather than putting 4-4, four, four, they always just used common time for everything. It was just, that's the common time signature. It means 4-4, four, four, it's the same difference. So you'll see the C at the beginning. That's the time signature. That you could put a 4-4 four, four there instead and it'd be the same thing. So much for that. Let's talk about this thing. We're no sharps or flats, C major or A minor. Well, look at the end. You're here. That sounds A minor to me. I'm going to guess it's an A minor. One hand at a time, let's make sure we get this. So starting with that A. Remember, two ledger lines below the treble clef is an A. One ledger line is a C. Two is an A. That's an A. Thumb. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this fun. And I'll make sure you have five and then two. That way we're in position to go on. One and two. Bring the thumb down, then, then bring the hand down. It's another way of moving. And for measure nine, you reach up, little finger, and do that again. Now it's third finger instead of second. Scrunch up a little more. Thumb down, and now come down. One and two. Okay. Moved around a little bit. That's neat. Left hand hold ups. Well, you have an A, and they're telling you it's an interval of a seventh. It's not really part of the music, they're just pointing it out. It's a seventh. One, two, three, four, one, two. Oh, goody. It's going to sound great, I can tell already. Let's go down to the last line. You have them together. And then F sharp, F, F natural, and an E. You have really big hands and fat fingers, and you can't do that. You have to do that. That's okay. And then I use two on the last one too. That's all I'm doing. And you'll do that sometimes in music, so you can try it here if you want. If you have real little hands, it doesn't work. You got to use thumb. Put the hands together. As articulation goes, the slurring in the right hand, keep the left hand connected. Just connect it as best you can. All of them. And the right hand you lift up between the slurs. It's like taking a breath. line it's every measure so, and that's fine. Dynamic wise, well for the first verse you're moderately loud. That's the right hand. Whatever you think moderately loud, keep the left hand soft. And then you're staying in that area into the bottom. Last line you'll come up a little bit, maybe up to loud I guess, in the right hand. And then when you repeat it, now you're soft for the second verse. The left hand has to be very soft. And at the bottom again, you're going to crescendo up to maybe a moderately soft, and then come back down to a soft. Slow down. Just slow down the second time. Is it RIT second time only, or something like that? I would do that anyway. If, if it, you're singing, a piece and it's it's repeats of multiple verses. If you're going to slow down at the end, I recommend you only slow down on the last time you're going to sing it. Well, on the last verse you're singing, slow down then. Don't slow down the other times because it messes up the singers. They they don't know what's going on. Are you slowing down? You're not. How much are you slowing down? And when are we going? What do I do next? And what's for breakfast? I don't know. 
So just keep it the same speed until the very end and then slow down. Here, and die away too. Speed wise, well, move gently. That doesn't say how fast do you want to move gently. It's up to you. If you're going to sing it, how fast would you sing it? Now there is a note at the bottom, at the last measure above the staff, that right hand plays 8VA on repeat. It simply means when you go back to the second verse, the right hand instead of here is going to be here. Only the right. So you're ending it here and then at the top, then you just lift the right hand up and, and do it all up here. The left hand stays where it's at. That's all. Then on top of that, they've added pedal. I think it sounds just fine without pedal. So, but let's see the effect the pedal has. Now they're changing pedal, it looks like, every two measures until you get to the last line. And then they're changing it every measure. Now that makes sense to me because the last line you're changing harmony on it. You're changing. You want to change the pedal for each of those. But this other part, is that really the sound you're after? If it is, then by all means do it that way. Otherwise, we've got to adjust the pedal. So if I pedal it the way they're suggesting, and it's going to be overlapping pedal, all the notes do their thing first and then the pedal, it's this way. After I play the notes. Is that really the sound you're after? I think it's a little blurry, but maybe you want it blurry. Maybe you want that effect. Some pieces do. If you don't, then I suggest you change it Maybe every measure. together. So how you pedal this is up to you and your teacher or whatever, but I think pedaling it, changing it every measure is a little nicer and I'm not, it's like measure five, if I pedal, uh, I'm catching all of that. Yeah. So I would change it at the measure, that way at least it cleans it out a little bit. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'll try and pedal it. I'm going to change the pedal every measure because I prefer that. Uh, I'll give us four counts and we are going to repeat it because it's repeated. Mm. One, two, ready? One, two, three, four,
for off.